There it is. The most powerful rocket in the world. Taller than the Statue of Liberty, heavier than 20 blue whales, and powered by four RS-25 rocket engines and two solid rocket boosters that combine for nearly 9 million pounds of thrust. All designed to get us back to the moon. For science! Oh yeah! What? Science is awesome! And I'm not just saying that because I'm the lead scientist for the LEGO space team. Hey, I'm Sophie, by the way. I'm saying it because the stuff we're going to learn from the Artemis mission is amazing! From Artemis 1, our uncrewed mission, to Artemis 3 and beyond, the missions that will put people on the moon, including the first woman and first person of color, each phase is packed with super cool and important scientific work. Let me give you an example. When Artemis 1 launches, it will be carrying 10 small satellites called CubeSats. Once the Orion spacecraft has successfully separated from the rocket, these CubeSats will be released into space where they'll perform science investigations and technology tests. They'll be helping us understand things like the impact of deep space radiation on living organisms, the hazards of near-Earth asteroids, and even how we can find places on the moon that have the resources we need to sustain human existence. All of these experiments will help us prepare for crewed missions like Artemis 2 and 3. Maybe you're wondering, why are we going to the moon at all? Well, good news. Our friends at NASA figured you might ask. So they made this. The moon is a treasure trove of science. It holds opportunities for us to make discoveries about our home planet, about our sun, and about our solar system. The wealth of knowledge to be gleaned from the moon will inspire a new generation of thought and action. This is not an ambition of one entity or one country. The exploration of the moon is a shared effort. Woven together by a desire for the greater good. Why the moon? Because the missions of tomorrow will be sparked by the accomplishments of the Artemis generation today. Because the ambition to go has already begun. And because Mars is calling. We need to learn what it takes to establish a community on another cosmic shore. So let's camp close before pushing out. It's all coming together, right? Don't worry, it's about to get even cooler because we've got a real NASA scientist here with us today. Kelsey Young is a planetary geologist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. She specializes in the development of handheld tools and instruments that astronauts will use to explore the Moon and Mars. She also trains astronauts in things like planetary science, geology, astrobiology, and more. Hey Kelsey, can you tell us about how you ended up with this awesome job and what kinds of things you get to do on a daily basis? Thanks, Sophie. It's so cool to see all of you learning so much about space exploration and the science that goes with it. I was interested in space as a child. I grew up in the Washington DC area, so we're really fortunate to have the Smithsonian Museums. My parents always took me to the Air and Space Museum and the geology wing of the Nat Natural History Museum. Um, so I really liked space. I really liked rocks and being outside. And so when I found out in college that I could study rocks and study space actually together by going out in places on Earth to actually learn about space and the processes we see happening all over the solar system, I never looked back. My current job is a field geologist with NASA. And specifically, I integrate geology with human spaceflight. So at NASA right now, we're preparing for the Artemis program, which is going to put astronauts on the south pole of the moon. And so to train those astronauts, we have to teach them how to do geology. Uh, I'm one of the people that's lucky enough to get to figure out how we're gonna train astronauts to do geology. We teach them in the classroom, just like you're in classrooms growing up in school. We take them out in the field to places that look like the South Pole of the Moon so they know what to expect when they get there. And I also help design the tools and science instruments that astronauts are, are gonna use on the South Pole of the Moon. And we also have to figure out how we on Earth are gonna help our astronauts when they're on the moon. What is mission control gonna look like? How are we going to help them do science from sitting in buildings right here on Earth? So we have to actually practice that with each other. We have to work with engineers and the astronauts and the flight directors and the flight controllers and everybody involved with really making Artemis successful. And it all starts now, years before astronauts are even on the surface of the moon. 
Yeah, the moon is a really fun and interesting place because we have four plus billion years of history still preserved there on the lunar surface. Here on Earth, we have things like oceans and plate tectonics that can actually erase the record of what happened on the surface of our planet. We don't have those things on the moon. Four billion years of rocks are still kind of ready and waiting for us to explore on the surface of the moon. For example, I've looked at rocks that Apollo astronauts picked up in the 1960s and 70s, and in a rock just this big, you can actually record multiple geologic events in one tiny, tiny rock this big. Astronauts are going to be exploring impact craters on the south pole of the moon. The moon is absolutely covered with impact craters. An impact crater forms when an asteroid from outer space hits the surface of a planet. Let's take Earth. An asteroid comes in, hits the surface of the Earth, and it actually explodes when it hits the ground. And all that energy and heat actually creates a big hole in the ground, just a big hole in the ground that then throws out other material outside of that crater. We see these features on Earth. We have a couple hundred of them preserved on Earth. But on the moon, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of impact craters. And by studying them, we can actually learn about the whole history of our solar system. Sometimes in, a, in the history of our solar system, we had more impact craters forming, and sometimes we had fewer impact craters forming. So by collecting rocks from these impact craters, we can actually figure out what the history of our own planet looked like. What tools do I work with here at NASA? Well, first and foremost, I'm really fortunate to work with some really smart people. We get to work with engineers all over NASA who actually design and build tools. I get to talk to them about what geologists use those tools for here on Earth, what, what we want astronauts to do with those tools on the moon. For example, uh, if you see pictures from Apollo, they use rock hammers to actually break rocks into smaller rocks to get a look on what's on the inside of a rock and also to make them smaller so they'll fit in their sample bags. We have tongs to enable an astronaut in a big bulky spacesuit to pick up rocks that are way far away from them on the ground. We have scoops and rakes that can pick up rocks of a very specific size that scientists are really interested in. So these engineers that I work with are really, really smart and amazing people, and they know how to build tools that are not just easy for astronauts in a big bulky spacesuit to wear, but also good for the science. I also work with smarter tools, tools that can tell you something real time, right when you're in the field, right when you're looking at the rocks, about what a rock's made out of. So we can use tools like handheld spectrometers. So imagine this, you're an astronaut on the surface of the moon, and in under a minute, you can use this tool that will, you can just hold in one hand and actually figure out what the rocks that you're looking at are actually made out of right there when you're on the moon. So we have to design those tools, we have to practice using them here on Earth, and then we have to train our astronauts in how to use them. We like to say that the moon is a witness plate for the history of the solar system. That means that whatever the moon has seen, the rest of the solar system has seen. And it's right there waiting for us to explore. We just need to train the astronauts on how to explore and what to look for, and also give them the tools they need to not just collect and sample the rocks, but image the rocks and see what those rocks are made out of, what they look like, so we can kind of tease out all these secrets that the moon has for us. Thanks, Kelsey. It was so cool to hear about your work and how you became a NASA scientist. And you're right, this mission has us designing our own tool for astronauts to use in space. Let's check out a video for a little inspiration. You may even recognize the narrator's voice. Watching Apollo footage of astronauts doing geology on the surface of the moon is a really great way to think about preparing for Artemis, for putting people on the lunar surface once again. We learn a lot in how they did science operations on the moon and what it's like to work on the moon. You see them doing geology. You see them taking rock samples, putting in a drive tube to take a core sample. You see them bouncing along the surface of the moon on the lunar rover that they used in Apollo 15 through 17. So it's a great way to help drive technology development for the next generation of spacesuits and geology sampling tools. Now that we're looking at putting astronauts on the surface of the moon, we also take them into the field. We take them to field sites here on Earth that resemble field sites that we expect them to see on the moon. And so by combining this classroom and field training, we're able to prep them for fundamentals of geology, the major driving lunar science questions that we have that we hope to address with the Artemis program, and teaching them how to do field work in relevant analog environments. 
This week, you'll have to think like Kelsey and come up with some creative ways to address the challenges astronauts might face as they do scientific work on the Moon and Mars. Let's check in with our friend James, who's here to walk you through it. Great to see you again. How cool was it to hear from Kelsey, a real NASA scientist? Can you imagine training astronauts and developing the tools and equipment they use? Well, that's exactly what you're going to be doing this week in the right tool for the job. Let's talk about it. Think about some of the tools you've used or seen other people use to complete different jobs. Maybe you're thinking of a shovel for digging a hole or a hammer on a nail. Maybe even a simple pencil for writing a letter. Well, astronauts use specialized tools too, you know, like to repair a spacecraft. Think about that for a minute. What types of tools do you think astronauts use on a spacecraft or while exploring the surface of the moon or Mars? Grab your engineering design notebook and write down your ideas. Then write down any questions you might have about those tools. Here's some questions to help you get started. What makes using a tool in space different than using them on Earth? What tasks do astronauts have to do in space that might require tools? How do scientists help in designing these tools? OK, are you ready to step in the shoes of a NASA scientist like Kelsey? I hope so because it's your turn to create a tool that astronauts can use in space to complete a task. Think about the job you're designing the tool to do. What features does the tool need in order to accomplish this task? How will you include those features in your tool? Start out by brainstorming and sketching your ideas. Be sure to explain what you're trying to do with your tool. When you're ready, build test and rebuild your model to make it better. Remember, don't be afraid to try different ideas. If it doesn't work, that's okay. You can try something new. After all, that's what NASA does. So, are you ready? Do you accept your final mission? You've done some amazing work and I'm sure you're going to do the same this week. This has been awesome. Thanks again for having me and don't worry, I'm going to be watching to see what everyone comes up with. Of course, James. Thank you for getting us psyched up for the next mission. Grab your engineering design notebooks and start brainstorming. As always, remember to submit your work on the LEGO Education Community or post on social media with hashtag build to launch. Your build could show up on our next mission briefing. See you next week. <laughs>